Today we're going to tear apart a TCL 5 series QLED TV. It looks like there's little, uh, they're, they're kind of, yeah, look at those little yellow spots underneath this. Is there phosphor under this? Yeah, you can see it. Oh, you can definitely see it afterwards. Let me look at off. that. Welcome everyone. Today we're tearing apart a TCL 5 series QLED TV with quantum dots inside. And as you can see, we got pretty excited with what we found inside. There was a surprise waiting for us. So I'd love to share with you our analysis uh, and tear down of this TV. Let's get into it. So I've got my friends Matt and Steve helping me out here today. You can see this is a 55 inch TCL 5 series. Uh, this was a TV that looks like was sold at Walmart, probably four or $500, it's a 2020 model year. It has contrast control zone technology, which is their name for local dimming. And it is broken, which is pretty standard when you get a TV for close to free on Facebook Marketplace. But that's not why we're interested in this one. Uh, it should have quantum dots inside, so I'm excited to get into it and analyze the quantum dot uh, sheet that's inside. So we're not too worried about the LCD being broken. Um, but there is a benefit to it actually lighting up on the front, and that is that we can still measure some of the optical spectrum at the front of the screen. So here you can see some of the really broken parts, but there are some parts that are still intact where actually individual colors are lighting up. Here's an isolated green line, so we can put our spectrometer on that and measure the green only. And we did the same for red and blue and white. Uh, here we actually have two different spectrometers going. Um, but we're able to get a good optical spectrum at the front of the screen, and that will tell you something a little bit differently than the optical spectrum in the backlight unit. Uh, because here it's after the LCD, after the liquid crystals uh, in the TV. So here's the green, blue, and red, and you can see they're each pretty pure, narrow peaks, except there are some satellite peaks. That could be bleed through through the color filters, or that could be from neighboring pixels that we didn't quite isolate very well. Uh, so here's the white at the front of the screen. So white is obviously a composition of blue, green, and red in this case. So now that we've got that data, um, we will compare that to the data in the backlight unit in a moment here. Um, again, the trickiest part of many of these TVs is getting the LCD separated from the BLU, the backlight unit. They typically use some sort of adhesive. Um, and as you can see, we use kind of a paint scraper to get into this. Matt got really good at this and has a nice smooth hand here. You can see we've got the TV on actually while we're doing this, which is kind of interesting. So you can see the LCD being bent and the light kind of coming through it as we slowly separate the adhesive here. But this worked pretty well to get the LCD separated from the frame and the rest of the components in the TV. So I'm always amazed at how thin and fragile and flexible these LCDs are. Uh, this is glass uh, and this has liquid crystals in it and thin film transistors and it's quite a fragile component. Again, it's broken. I'm not too worried about it. We probably wouldn't have handled it the same way if we were going to try and put it back together. I'm hoping on the next TV that you can see in the background there, it's a big Samsung TV. I'm hoping that one works and that we can show you what the LCD actually looks like when it's separated from the backlight unit. That should be pretty neat. So here we get all the framing off uh, that's holding it to death together. And we finally get into the films in the backlight unit. And this is where a lot of the interesting analysis happens. This is where I'm very interested in. So we take some optical spectra with these light enhancing sheets. These sheets, these films in the back um, help control the direction of the light that's coming out. It helps recycle the light, helps diffuse it so you don't get hot spots from the LEDs behind it. There's lots of functions of these. Um, and so it's interesting to take some optical spectra after removing each of these sheets. And here we're comparing the color, the white color at the front of the screen and the back in the BLU. And you can see there's very little difference. It's not always like this with some TVs that are not quantum dot TVs. The quantum dots have very narrow emissions, so the color filters don't actually change the optical signature all that much. So now we're measuring the quantum dot film with the TV on, and then also just the blue light coming from the LEDs in the back. And these LEDs are really bright when you get to this point. You'll notice we both have glasses on. So we have 96 individual LEDs here, um, and it is important 
uh, to, to keep the, the glasses on that block some of this light. Otherwise, your eyes tend to hurt. So safety first. Steve has donned the double pair of polarized sunglasses here since I had only one pair of blue blocking glasses. And here we're looking at the diffuser itself and we noticed some patterns on this. Um, there was some white scattering agent, scattering dots printed or patterned on this diffuser, especially at the edge, there was this interesting gradient. And I think this is mostly for light control purposes. So you don't have a bright edge effect or you keep uniformity around the whole TV. Here you can see the yellow looking quantum dot film, which when you shine a UV flashlight on it, fluoresces green color. Uh, it's actually green and red, but our eyes are more sensitive to green. So that's what you see when you just take a video like this, but we can use our spectrometer and more accurately determine exactly what color, uh, what peak position, what peak width these quantum dots are emitting at. So for those of you that aren't familiar, quantum dots can be tuned to a certain color by their size. So here we've got two different size quantum dots in this film, one emitting red, one emitting green. You can see they're both quite narrow peaks, less than 30 nanometer full width half max. That's extremely good. And here you can see the UV flashlight uh, emitting just below 400 nanometers as well. The red and green ratio here is not uh, what it actually would represent coming out of the front of the screen because there's more light recycle going on in the backlight. Here we look at the brightness enhancing films. There's two of them. And you can see they each show this interesting pattern of splitting the light. Uh, we're shining these through backwards now just to look at this interesting pattern. Uh, but this is often used as, as two films that are crossed uh, 90 degrees to each other to give you that interesting effect. And then as we discovered a little more closely, these LEDs actually are not just blue LEDs. Well, the LEDs are blue, but there's something else going on here. And this is what we got really excited about that I alluded to earlier. Uh, there's actually some four yellow dots around the blue LED, but underneath the lens. And you can see here, these yellow dots are, uh, seem to be fluorescing. So we've got a blue LED plus something else going on here. And, and it's pretty clear once we take the optical spectrum, what's going on. This is actually a phosphor that's very commonly used in the lighting industry called YAG, yttrium aluminum garnet. And this phosphor emits in the visible region quite broadly. You can see here the blue LED peak and then the phosphor emission peaking around 540, 550 or so, but it bleeds into the red uh, throughout the visible. And this phosphor is well known, it's popular, it's a highly efficient phosphor, it's very stable, but it doesn't have good color purity. So here you can see a close up of this phosphor that's printed in these four dots around the blue LED. It's often used on the LED, but in this case, the LED is blue and the phosphor is just printed around it underneath this plastic lens. And so you can see this a little better actually if we use the blue blocking glasses that I was wearing. So I'll take the video here through the blue blocking glasses and you can see the change in, the, in what it looks like. Uh, now the yellow really pops much better than the blue because a lot of the blue light is being filtered out by these lenses and doesn't saturate my iPhone camera. So you can see these four yellow dots, that's the YAG, that's the phosphor. It's a very thin layer printed in this pattern around the blue LED. And there are various reasons this might be the case. Of course, we weren't expecting this. We were expecting just a quantum dot film to be in this TV, which we found. Uh, I was not expecting it to have phosphor in addition to that quantum dot film. So once we've done a nice full characterization of this phosphor and the LED, uh, we then did some experiments with how we could remove it and see if that changed the optical signature that we get out of this. So here we painted it black, basically just put a Sharpie marker on it. And you can see you lose the hot spot uh, once the diffuser sheet is on. And this optical spectrum actually really doesn't change that much. Maybe it's just a little bit lower in terms of intensity, but it really didn't change that much. Here we've scratched off the phosphor and I expect you can probably find the one LED that we've changed here. So clearly there's a difference. When we have this phosphor on, you get these yellow spots. So we'll move on to the LED lens and take a look at that for a little bit from here. The LED has this interesting lens on top of it, almost like a donut shape. Um, it's got a bit of a dimple in the top of it and a, a gap in the bottom where the LED fits. These are pretty easy to just pop off the LEDs and take a look at. And we're able to find a journal article that discusses some of the optical properties of these lenses. So I think the design used by TCL is very similar in some cases to these what they're calling double freeform lens designs. 
And the double lens is the fact that you have an air to polymer interface or air to plastic interface and then another plastic to air interface. So the light has two chances to change direction when you change the index of refraction here. Uh, so without going into the physics too much, the purpose of these is basically to eliminate those hot spots and just move this light around more uniformly. You get a lot of emission at, at very extreme angles and less emission straight ahead for these LEDs. And you can see that pretty clearly when we take off a lens. So we've removed just one lens out of the array of 96 here, and you can see it has this horrible bright spot, which isn't there if you don't, if you have the lenses on everywhere else. I think it's quite clear why the lens is used in this TV. Uh, other TVs use a similar design. It's essentially to eliminate hot spots and diffuse the light out before it comes through all the optical films. So it gives you more uniformity and intensity as well as color. The possible reasons why the phosphor might be included are less clear to me. If you wanted to only enhance the color gamut of a TV, you would just use the quantum dots. So there's gotta be another reason this is happening. Uh, perhaps there's a reason for enhancing the brightness that the phosphor can help with because it's very efficient, but the quantum dots are highly efficient as well. The color uniformity or brightness uniformity perhaps is another reason. You saw those yellow spots above the LEDs. A yellow hot spot above an LED might be a little easier to account for than a blue hot spot above an LED. So perhaps that's another reason. And finally, there could be patent related reasons. Well, thanks everybody for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. As you can see, we weren't really expecting there to be a combination of quantum dots and phosphors in this TV. And there's many possible reasons for that. Uh, we look forward to the next TV that we're going to tear down, which is going to be a Samsung 75 inch QLED TV. Subscribe if you want to see that one and let me know if you have any other ideas. Thanks.